Hey everyone, this is Pojo, and we're playing XCOM Enemy Within Long War. This is Beta 14F, and we're playing on Iron Man Impossible, meaning, essentially, that we're playing on the hardest possible mode of one of the hardest possible mods of XCOM that exists. We're not going to be reloading any saves, we are basically stuck with whatever decisions we make, and probably a lot of people are going to die. So, with that in mind, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, so, in terms of second wave options, I tend to use strict screening. I really, really like it. It's essentially, uh, it's essentially the original XCOM stats where, um, rookies always have the same starting stats. It means you have a little bit less to manage. Uh, it can actually be a little bit tougher in this aspect because you don't have, like, superhero rookies. But, um, in general, I just prefer it both in terms of gameplay and, uh, other things. So that's, that's what we're going to be going for. We're also going to go for Liberators. This can extend the game length quite a bit if you're not doing very well. It means that essentially you have to free all of the countries from alien control before you can launch the final mission. And if you're doing fine, this isn't actually going to make all that much of a difference, but uh, this is something that actually like adds quite a bit of a challenge to it in impossible mode because obviously it's actually pretty hard and you can't just skip to the end. So that's going to be fairly important for us. Um, DLC, we're actually going to enable both of them. I think that the DLC is actually pretty challenging and difficult. Um, Operation Slingshot in particular has some really tricky missions at the end. I don't know too much about Progeny. I actually haven't played too much of it, but uh, pretty excited about that. Reduce beginner VO should be good, and of course we're enabling Iron Man. Alright, with that done, let's get into it. Alright, first thing to discuss is continent choices. And we're going to be making a tricky one, actually. We're going to make a really interesting choice in terms of how to how to start our game. Um, should we watch the cinematic? No, I think we're good. Let's play with the devil's toys. Okay, so the continents are pretty well balanced in 14F. They're actually going to change this up uh, in beta 15 quite a bit, and there's going to be a lot of different start bonuses. But the way that the continents currently work, you have North America, which is air and space. Uh, this is really just fantastic because aircraft and aircraft weapons are both really expensive. So you can save a ton of money on this, and you have a $420 start. So it's just a really good solid continent. Three countries to cover, that's always great. Europe is expert knowledge, labs, workshops, and officer training school. Um, the officer training school is moved over from Asia, which actually makes Europe a much more viable start. You only have about 380 bucks here, but with the officer training school bonus, it can actually be pretty viable, and of course uh, this allows you to get a lot of the nice early buildings that you want um, going pretty fast. Uh, the only problem with this, of course, is that like there's actually increased power requirements for a lot of things here, um, especially for satellite uplinks, so you have a little less money to build buildings. And of course Europe just has the weakest money start in the game, which is something that I actually care a lot about in terms of the first month. Asia. All projects in the foundry cost 60% of their regular cost. This is, I think, quite viable. It's still a $420 start. The foundry projects are really fantastic. This means that you can start with a foundry project that increases the alloys and the weapon fragments, and I believe there's one for Illyrium as well. And if you take these like really early for their cheaper costs, you can actually save a lot in the long run. And in addition, like just the foundry bonus does save you a ton of money. I think this continent is fantastic. Um, we're not going to be starting it, so we're probably not going to be taking it because it's a four-country continent, and that's pretty tricky. Africa is my favorite. Uh, this one is essentially a 30% XCOM funding bonus, and this money actually will keep even or do better than North America in the early months. And if you can expand quickly, then it'll do better in the middle months as well. Uh, I've done the math on it, and I think it's like a really strong start in general. Um, it also gets just a little bit of extra bonus cash here. I think about 50 bucks more than it used to in the beta 13. But yeah, it's like $100 bonus cash. It starts with, I think, 580? 580 sounds right. 420, 580. Yeah, and then maybe it's 480. Something like that. But South America actually uh, is where we're going to start. And that's going to be <laughs> uh, that's going to be our choice. So the reason for this is the power of the people bonus is actually not all that strong. Sixty percent, it's it's okay. Uh, it does save you a pretty decent amount of money. But the other thing that happens is that South America gets about three hundred bonus cash, which means it is the highest cash start in the game. And I believe it starts with almost two hundred dollars more than uh, some of the smaller continents. And that's actually going to be fairly important because we're going to be trying a really unique build path. 
So that's what we're going to be going for. And we're going to basically go South America, and then we're going to jump to North America or Africa, and we're going to just try and take the entire western side of the continent, provided the aliens don't set up a base there. Um, and so, I'll explain a little bit more of the math the longer we get into it, but basically you'll see immediately after this mission that there will just be a huge pile of cash to play with, and we can get a really nice infrastructure started right away. So, that's going to be our deal, provided we don't lose the first mission and just uh, kind of explode. Anyways, here we go. The operation is Glass Vanguard. It's taking place in the two buildings. This is an EW map, which I like quite a bit. It's very big, and there's a lot of room to make mistakes here, but there's also a lot of room to actually like do interesting things with the roofs and that kind of thing. Um, the higher roof has no real vision into the alleyway, which is something that you can often get caught on, and there's a lot of like open space where it's actually really hard to get flanks, but all in all, this, this map is just really well designed, and it's just got a lot of good, useful functions that you can play with. So, we're going to go ahead and start. Um, I don't think we're starting on the roof. Uh, one of the nice Beta 14 changes, there are new start locations, and Strike this one. is one of them. We actually started in the alleyway, which the I think is Don't really strong. Chances. Yeah, this looks actually very good. Um, basic plan here will definitely be to take this right side building, because this building is actually kind of tricky. Uh, to deal with, and once we have the right side building, we can close on the doors, we might actually be able to climb up the roof somewhere. Is there a pipe? Is there a pipe anywhere? It doesn't look like there's a pipe. There's not a pipe until over here. There's a ladder on this side, and then, yeah, there should be another pipe or ladder somewhere around here, but it's actually pretty difficult to get up onto this roof. So we're just going to take the building first, we're going to move around, look for a pipe, and then if we can get to the pipe or to the ladder, we can abuse that to take the alleyway. If not, we'll just take the alleyway from the building because we have those nice open doors to breach. Um, so first things first, since we're going to the right, we need to move this guy first because he's the most likely to trigger things in the alleyway. Alright, and since he didn't, we're probably good to go. Just go ahead and move our back people forward. Get some people in place on the door. And this is a good time to look at our rookies and see what they're carrying. We have one HE grenade. Uh, this guy has a laser sight, so he'll have slightly better aim. Um, another HE grenade. Doesn't look like we have any flashes. Another HE grenade. Okay, no flash grenades. So if we're going to get out of problems, we're going to have to do it with HEs. We do have a med kit, so if we get into serious trouble, that can be useful. And it looks like one of our guys is the tank. This okay. is going to be our breacher. And here we go. Standard door breach is steady weapon. Steady weapon. Um, we'll go ahead and steady this one as well. And then we'll overwatch these two. And probably this guy. So now we have two people ready to go. They have an extra 20 aim as soon as we open up that door. And then we've got a bunch of people who can just run into the room and do the breach. I heard sectoids. I also hear meld off to the left, which uh, kind of could change our strategy a little bit. We might want to move away from this door now. But we've got a really nice committed breach. Oh, there's the meld. Okay, it's on the roof. Um, and actually that does change our plan quite a bit, since the roof is pretty easy to take. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and go for it. Let's push up to this side. And, yeah, there's no way that we're going to trigger things on that side. And if we do, we'll have a half cover. Okay. So... Do we want to just have this guy run out and grab the meld while the rest of them... I'm going to go ahead and do this breach. And that was a little goofy, but that allows us to take this side, which is going to be helpful for later. Okay. So we'll just push in a little bit. On my way. Get everybody nice and secure. We'll have this guy move over I'm to here. Move. Which gives us a little more of a view of the alleyway than I'd like, actually, but should be fine. And then that way I can push this guy all the way up to here. That's that way. Perfect. 
just make sure that we don't cut any corners, trigger any extra aliens on our last move. Whoa! Alright, alright, that's where you want to stay. Overwatch. Um, there's actually some things to be said for steady aim, but I think Overwatch is probably still going to be better. Okay. There are sectoid sounds coming from that building, or possibly from the roof. I really hope that that door that they kicked in is on this side, because if that's true, that indicates to me that they're not on the roof. Oh man, and we're going to have to really split up if we want to get both cans of melt. Where is that other can of melt? Playing around with the camera angles a little bit, trying to figure out what's best. Oh, this looks nice. I like it. Okay. And from here we might be able to see that meld canister. If it's anywhere, it's over on the very far wall. Okay, so that's that's fine. We did a little scan, and uh, I think we're happy with the results. Uh, one thing we did here, a door kicked open. If we can see that door, that'll give us a lot of hint as to where the aliens are at. I think it's this door right here. That's the only door available that they could have kicked. Um, yeah. So that means that they're probably on the ground, which means that we're free to move up to this melt canister. Alien object in sight. All right. Alien object in sight. Um, gonna put two people on the roof team. Just basically have them ready to strike in the alleyway. Move this guy up to here, so we have the alleyway covered, and we know that there's meld out there, so we're just going to go ahead and start moving. Maybe set up a breach or two. And oh, that was actually bad because it will open just a few more spaces and we don't want to trigger aliens on our last move. That's okay. Everything worked out just fine. Steady some of these so that we have good options and just go ahead and set up our overwatches. Sectoid's moving around inside the building. Seems pretty likely. I think I heard some glass breaking. And we have a third can of melt. Okay. So before we get that meld, we need to open up this door. We need to start looking for that last can. I actually think we don't want to open up that door just yet. There's no point to it. What we want to do is we want to push over to here. And from there we can um, just push out. Just keep moving up. I think we're totally clean on this side. Um, it looks like we're not going to trigger any aliens. Uh, ooh! And there's the melt canister. Do we want to double move for it is the question. I'm going to double move up to this. Okay. And that should give me a better idea of where those aliens are at. Uh, it's a little risky to push further forward here, but... I just, hmm. Yeah, let's see here. I really want to get that milk canister, so we're going to go ahead and push up to there. Okay, and we don't want to make any more rash moves today, so we're just going to collect that melt. Get this guy to the center of the roof where he can't be spotted. Same for this one. And I think from here we just, uh... We get everybody up onto the roof, and we just sort of take this area, because it's completely clean. We can't see down, which means we can't trigger pods. We're going to have a nice, safe melt collection, and then we'll be able to safely move and flank wherever we want. And, yeah, obviously no reason not to just continue advancing forward here. This is, uh, 
pretty aggressive. We just don't have overwatches or anything on people. And we have sectoids in the alleyway. It would be really nice to flank those sectoids, but we have a slightly more interesting goal in mind right now. Let's get to that hard cover point. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the double move here. That scared the crap out of me. Um, yeah. <laughs> ah. There's one more can of meld off in this direction. I know we heard it. So we need to actually go and find it. Let's take this cover point first. Okay, and that gives us a really good view of what's going on up here. Once again, there's no reason not to just get all the way up and get everybody forward. We'll listen for the meld. We'll probably drop down and take it pretty soon. see a little bit more of the alleyway than I'd like here. Uh, okay, that's fine. Getting it done. So, I know that there are sectoids over here, so we should definitely just guard this door, and there's that last melt canister. Um, we're moving straight for it. I still think it's best to, hmm, we should be setting up for that melt canister, so I'm going to move somebody over to this door as well. You're going to be our guard against any sectoid intrusions from this alleyway. And it looks like we got sectoids behind us as well. Okay. Gonna have to be real careful about that. These sectoids are on a patrol path, so they're actually moving uh, in and out of the building. And we're having ourselves a little sneaking mission here. We're actually doing really well in terms of just collecting all the meld without having to deal with the aliens. I do know that there is a Melcaster there. Um, I'm rolling. Okay, so let's move up to here and see what our options are. We are within one, two tiles of it, and I'd like to get a little bit more than that. So let's get yeah, over to here. From there we'll be able to jump down directly onto that melt canister and take it. it. This melt canister is ours now. Ten, four. Claim it. And there are sectoids behind us that we don't want to deal with right now, so we're going to go ahead and just get everyone forward out. And behind hard cover. Our breach team on the roof. We need both of these guys to cover uh, this one once he gets the melt. But I think we're going to walk away with nine. Steady up a breach. Overwatch, overwatch. And we're ready to go. Okay, those sectoids are still in the alleyway. Which is a little problematic. But all in all, not too bad. Okay, I hear sectoids skittering around the alleyway. So let's... We want to get vision first. Just jump down. I think we're gonna get vision first. Okay, we can see the alleyway now. That's good news. So this one jumps down, and there's our sectoids. And a single drone as well, which is uh, not what we really want to see, but it's landed, so. Life's not too bad. The first thing I'm seeing is a 65% chance on that drone, which is well worth taking. And for some reason... okay, there we go. So we need to measure a direct flank on this sectoid. I think it's completely worth it to do so. It should be right here. The main problem is that that might be blocking, but I think we're going to be okay. So yeah, we just need to be about here-ish. 
have a vacuum running in the background, so it might take a brief moment. And uh, just... We'll take this shot and then we'll probably <laughs> break off our recording for a little bit and come back to it. Uh, 85%, 85%, yeah, 85% flank on the sectoid commander. So let's get the commander out of the way. And there we go. Cool. Uh, this one, I can kill that guy with a grenade, I think. If I can land the grenade, this actually makes life a lot easier, but nope, not quite. Since we're in for the whole deal, let's check and see if we can land that grenade from here. Oh, that's... Where are you throwing from, sir? Alright, well we have an HE grenade to light the car on fire if we choose to. It's not really our best option, but... So the first thing I think I want to do is take that 65%. And since we missed it, I think there's really only one option, and that's to take the 86% on this drone. Okay. And now... Hmm. That actually leads to some problems, because if we run into the alley where we're going to trigger those aliens, I think it's almost a guarantee at this point. So these guys are sort of stuck back here. Except we can get them forward by avoiding... Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, we did trigger the aliens. I was kind of hoping that wouldn't be the case, but um, it's okay because they don't really have solid options on us right now. Um, they are taking appropriate cover, which kind of sucks. We're going to get our guys up onto the roof where they can grenade where they can cover our backsides. And the last group is still behind us over here, so we can't really move for that flank. Looks like that vacuum cleaner's done. It's good times, good times. There we go. Let's just go this way. Um, yeah. Overwatch, overwatch. This sectoid's gonna get a pretty nice shot on us, but... Shouldn't be too bad. Uh, that is half cover, which is pretty rotten. We're lucky we didn't get hit there. And there goes the drone into the air. Okay, we're lucky today. Really lucky. So now we've got a close range shot on that drone, and that's definitely going to be our first move. Let's see if we can take it out. Okay, and yeah, I think that's definitely our indication that we're going to stop recording for a moment and <laughs> come back in a second. I'll see you guys then. Alright, we are back, and we're recording again, hopefully. Yeah, everything should be good. Um, same problem as before. Uh, four sectoids over here, drone, and another dude over there. So I believe we were going to take this shot. This was our next move. Let's go ahead and set that up right now as close as possible to the drone, so we have the best shot. <sighs> Drones. Alright. Okay. Even a 50% can hit sometimes. And with that, we can easily move up to here and claim that sectoid. We know the last pod is in the uh, northwest corner, so this should be pretty straightforward. Kill, kill, kill. Excellent. And that is... oh. That sector got to move on. Um, hmm. That's actually problematic. Okay, well we need to deal with that sector right now, so we're going to go ahead and set up an AP grenade because we have so many people behind half cover. And uh, we don't really want to deal with anything to... yeah. I guess he can't really see us on the side here, but this is going to be the safest possible path. Explodey, explodey. Okay. That leaves us with three sectoids, and then the ones in the northwest corner. With that in mind, let's move up to here. We can't see the sectoids on this side, that's fine. Um, pretty much every... we have plenty of people who are currently exposed, so hunkering here might not actually be the best play. But, on the other hand, 
if they come out this side, then they come out that side. So essentially we're just going to have to go ahead and set up like this. Because we're not splitting their fire. Okay. And there is our sectoid mine merge. That's going to be something we can really take advantage of. This is going to be a tricky shot against someone in half cover. Fortunately, it was a terrible miss. Okay. Which door just got kicked? That door? That's going to make flanks unusually difficult. Especially since we can't actually get inside here for a flank. Um, but what we can do... Uh... Okay, so we know what our targets are. We know what we want to kill. So basically we want to move to kill them in as fast and efficient a manner as possible. Let's see what we've got for options. If we move this soldier up, we can get a better look inside the building, which is going to be fairly relevant. It's also going to get us this nice hard cover spot. Okay. Okay. Still can't see any aliens, that's good news for us. We know there are three, and there's one that we can't see, but we're pretty sure that it's the guy who ran over here. So that's going to be something that we can consider while we operate. I think the next thing I want to do is take this section. Uh, no, wait, we first have to make sure that this sectoid dies. There are a couple of ways to do that. Perhaps the first and most obvious one is going to be a three-part solution. We're going to deal some damage to him this way, possibly crit him to death. And there is our missing sectoid, who is on Overwatch. Okay, that's fine. So, do the damage, and we get the crit. That's excellent. Okay, so with the crit available, that means that we can now push into this building. And we can wreck this sectoid's cover, which should allow us to get some really good options on him. Before we do that, we might want to move our people who can actually shoot him into place. If we can drop down here. Perfect. And I don't think that's a flank, because we have to lean out here. Okay, it's mostly a flank. We actually just need to get the uh, HE grenade down. We've got two people with HE grenades available. We're going to give this one a first toss. Alright, here we go. Good times, and it looks like we actually outright killed that sectoid, so not sure why. Exploding laundromat? I don't know. In any event, with that done, we can easily destroy this sectoid's cover. And since we've seen all four, we know that there are sectoids in this section. Okay, and there goes that sectoid's cover. That leaves him completely exposed on this side to fire. Only a 65% is not really all that nice, but let's consider here. Yeah, we can actually close here, and unfortunately those sectoids are actually standing in that door, which was not what I was hoping for, but I'm still going to take this shot. Okay, that sucks. Um, what's our best option from here? We might still be able to get a shot through this door. On it. And we kind of need it at this point, so let's see what we can do. Seeing as we can move ourselves into a flanking position. Alright. Come on, little sectoid, please die. Much better. Okay. Uh, from here, this guy's not going to land an overwatch from the distance he's at, so I'm going to have to reload him. And now I have to worry about sectoids flanking on this side. Which I think is a distinct possibility. Here we 
goes. Okay, good. He's not taking a too aggressive position. And that sector is also not taking too aggressive a position, so that means that we can actually fall back if we choose to. I believe this is out of vision of that sectoid, so that's going to be pretty reasonable. We have the HE grenade to actually make more stuff available to us. We have a lot of people who need to be reloaded. Where's the pipe on this side? The ladder? Okay. So I think this turn is the turn to melt into the shadows and let them come to us. At least a little bit. So we're going to push back to here. Moving to position. And that does trigger an overwatch. That's rather surprising to me. But we got lucky, so we're okay. Did it hit anything useful? No. Okay. At the very least, we had the hard cover bonus on the overwatch, so it was a 65 minus 40 divided by 70%. It was not likely to hit. Um, all right. So, with that in mind, we now have this pretty much sealed up. We're not going to overwatch here because the sectoid can move to that garbage can without actually getting into trouble. At least I think the sectoid can move to that garbage can. Yeah, it should be fine. So, with that in mind, we're going to instead start looking at better options. This roof is really nice. Um, and it can set up for some good flanks, but I think it's actually probably better to focus our power a little bit further forward. Um, any need for an overwatch here? No. That'll be another hunker. Richard needs to fall back behind this cover so that he can reload his gun. Um, beyond that, we've got two others who are perfectly capable. And these way. guys can't be seen, so they can set up overwatches if they want to. Um, that's on fire, so not really a good choice to stay behind it. And we actually want to start taking the roof now, so we're going to move these guys up to the roof. We're not going to reload because we need to get a lot of firepower forward right away. And because we want this roof. Okay. Move on up. We'll have the flanks next turn. We're completely out of sight of the alien, so they have to come to us or Overwatch. Either way, we're happy because we have those nice HE grenades. So we'll hunker down behind the car, and we'll see what they do. Interesting. Okay, we have... A very unusual choice for that sectoid. It looks like he's vaguely aware of our position on the roof and is actually trying to move to counter us. Not sure what I'd call that. We've still got one sectoid missing. He's definitely on Overwatch or has a very high likelihood of being on Overwatch. Let's see if we can get a peek out into the alleyway from here. Sight's going to be a little tricky, but it should be doable. Okay, we can't see anything. That's fine. Um, we can now back up into the building. See if we can see any sectoids there. Nothing at the moment. With that in mind, let's just move up and get the flanks. I'm going to go ahead and set up on this side. We're both going to set up overwatches for if the sector decides to climb the pipe. Everyone else is in pretty good shape. I'm a little worried about sectoids charging through here. And I kind of need to start pushing further forward so that I have all of my guys in a nice focused ball. So we'll just continue to hang around here. Um, we already know that there aren't any sectoids on this side. So we will back into here and watch. And let's see what these sectoids are planning. 
They're being goofballs. They're moving the long way around. So that's something that we might be able to do. <coughs> and we got a lot of movement, but it's all on the far side. So what have we got here? Let's get onto this wall. Okay. That's gonna give us good vision of what's going on on this side. Um, but it looks like we're pretty clean on here. So with that in mind, I'm gonna push up to this cover position here, see if I can get a shot on that sector behind the truck. Not quite. However, I'm pretty confident that the sector can't flank me on this side. Yep, okay. So there's that last sectoid that we couldn't see. And he's just hanging out on the wall there. Now these sectoids are notably still unable to be flanked. On it. Cover up those positions. I'm on the move. Make them come to us for at least one more turn, and then we will consider coming to them. Insect eyes. Uh -huh. Nothing of value. Okay. On the plus side, we're moved pretty far up now. Let's take a look. Okay, now we can't see that last sectoid. Which is a little problematic. Solid copy. Let's get inside the building. Nice and simple. Need to keep an eye on all of the different parts of the alleyways, make sure that the sectoids don't come up and flank anybody. There now. Just keep pushing forward. Make sure they have less ground to maneuver in. And we know they're down here, so we can start setting up for breaches. I'm just a little leery of it. This nice curve formation where everybody can jump down and fire all at once. The two people on the roof have the best shots, but they're very vulnerable if I don't take out the rest of them. So we want to be pretty careful about how we proceed. Alright, now we got our sector moving up. What has he chosen? For his. Okay. That's a pretty bad spot, honestly. So, the sectoid has the advantage of being able to see through these doors, which gives us some problems when it comes to actually dealing with him. We're not going to be able to get into this door without getting hit by an Overwatch. I think this, however, should be clean. He's gonna have a lean out shot, but he shouldn't be able to see me until I'm into the hardcover. I lied. He can see through that other door. Fortunately, we still have the 20 uh, cover bonus, and of course, that sector does not have a lot of vision on us, so. Let's see what we can toss. Answer's not much. Okay, at this point, I'm ready to set up for the flanks. The sectoids want to come up into just the goonies here. That's their prerogative. I'm on the move. We're going to guard the ladders. We're going to stop them from getting further forward. Just the one sectoid saw us. Hunker there. Keep an eye on the ladder, I'm on it. and keep these guys on the trucks or further forward. Say right around to here, actually. We can 
can get into there. Uh, it's kind of a stretch. What I really like to do is get over there, but it looks like that's not going to happen. Okay. All the way around. Those overwatches up. Um, this guards the ladder. It's also a little dangerous. I think we can stand a hunker here. Okay, let's see what the sectoids do. Okay, they're moving, but they don't seem to be aware of the guys on the roof. So that's good news. We also don't have a sectoid. Overwatch here, or at least not one that we can see. And they may just be being very sneaky, but I think we're actually good to go. So let's look at this sectoid here, see what we can do. We drop down on top of him, that's certainly an option. Where's the other sectoid is the main question. We have to identify his position so that we don't get overwatched. And it looks like he's right here, because that's the one place that we can't move. So with that in mind, his overwatches should be all pretty straightforward. Can we hit that spot? can wreck it from here, but not very well. Let's get over to here, and we'll just toss the HE grenade. Eh. Yeah, I'm comfy with this. Kind of blow open the wall and see if we can see. Okay, didn't deal the damage we want, but now we can see that sector. should be able to... Let's take a look, make sure we've got everything right. Okay, straight ahead. Go, go, go. And there's our flanks. We need to get rid of this guy first. Okay, he's down. Get this guy close for a hero grenade. What? Oh! That's the Mind Merger. Okay. My mistake. I was thinking because he had 5 health that he was not the Mind Merger. But I have erred. And that's fine. We're actually in good shape. Okay, so what we actually need to do is kill... Hmm. kill this one, that will solve pretty much all of our problems. It's going to be kind of a tricky roll, though. We got it. Cool. That sectoid takes damage, and now I can drop down, flank him, and that's going to be a clean mission. Alright, we made some lucky rolls there, but all in all, I think that was a very well-executed mission. So, now we need to start thinking about base defense. We also need to think about what kind of promotions we're going to be giving people. Commander to the research and labs. back to Brazil. To Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. Oh, thank you, Bradford. I'm You're delightful. Not only did our troops return safely, but the meld they recovered will certainly advance our development of new technologies based on this substance. Okay, to start with, we want gunners before heavies. Uh, supports, we want engineers. <clears throat> Tactical, I think we're going to want at least one assault early on. And since we have scout and sniper, let's get a scout and a sniper. 
and that's pretty straightforward. They recovered artifacts are being unloaded, and the research ten meld, seven weapon fragments, six corpses, a drone wreck, order, Xeno bio and alien materials. Really, everything just went pretty much as swimmingly as it could. As you can see, we have 680 credits to start, so roughly 140 more than no, 240 more than any other start besides Africa. I believe Africa has 580 to start. So yeah, that's a really sizable amount to invest in infrastructure. Uh. Hey Shed. So, let's take a look at our opening setup. Oh gosh, this is gorgeous. This is so pretty. So we have some really solid options here. Um, notably we can build satellite uplinks here, excavate here, build a power generator. Let's excavate there and build the satellite uplink right now. I guess we could set up a power generator first. No, that's not going to work. We are going to build power generators pretty much in all four of these sections. Because we want to go down, so this is where our fission generator is going to be. And with that in mind, we can go ahead and set up the satellite uplink right now. And we will need to order satellites. Two of them, to be precise. Commander to mission control. Commander to mission control. Just make sure all of that's out of the way right now. Every member of the council is going to because that's where we're going to go. Okay. So we should plan our deployments carefully. Starting options: Xenobio and weapon fragments. Xenobio is the preferred choice in general because it gets you a lot more scientists. It's been nerfed just a little bit in beta 14. It's three days more, but um, actually we're going to be going for alien weaponry first. And that's because we're basically trying to build just like a super heavy satellite rush start. We're going to go as aggressive as possible on taking new continents because we're starting in South America. We have a lot of money to burn on satellites, but we need to actually take other continents to make that money last. Basically, we're going to use that early game advantage to really secure the mid game advantage. I agree. That does seem to be the most pressing okay. of our current research. So, alien weaponry. We'll begin immediately. I will notify you when a complete report is available. Control. And we have our ravens. Which all look great. Hound Hondo. Um, we might consider ordering another interceptor pretty soon. Let's visit the gray market and see if there's anything we need to sell. For example, we could sell 70 meld and you know, we could sell all of this meld and one of the sectoid corpses. It actually cost a little bit less now, that's interesting. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. Our next abduction mission will give us an interceptor, so we'll be good with that. And we want three avalanche missiles to shoot down scouts and one stingray missile in case things go wrong. I used to go two and two, but if you shoot down the scouts, they'll never scout your satellites, so it's actually better to try and secure those and then just deal with the uh, raiders later on. Is there an exclamation point somewhere that I missed? I think we're good. Alright, so that's mission one. Uh, let's go ahead and scan for activity. We'll see what we're up against next, and then we'll call it a, a mission. Alright, abduction site in Australia. Abductions Gotta go save the beaks. The um, okay, so yeah. Hundred dollars are on the line. I'm gonna go ahead and set up our crew, and then we will move on to the next mission in a little bit. Looks like we got six guys to start, so this should be pretty straightforward. And we'll just go ahead and set that up uh, off screen. So, I'll see you guys next time, and uh, have a good one.